Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to BarCast TV and to another episode of BarCast Daily. It's currently May 26, 2023, and I wanted to spend a little bit of time before the video to kind of give you all a channel update, so to speak, and talk with you all about what you would like to see more of from the channel. So yesterday I posted a poll asking what level of RTS experience, what level of bar experience you all had, and it looks like most of the most of the viewers here are leaning towards the more experienced people, which is to be expected. It's more of like a 1v1 channel, so uh, it doesn't really surprise me how much of y'all have a decent amount of RTS experience or have been involved in like subcom TA before. So thanks for those of you who have voted and responded to that poll. It gives me a lot of information on what direction to kind of take the channel. And that being said, it, like it, most of you all have a lot of experience or it seems like it. Um, and I will say I'll, I'll try and kind of gear the channel more to that with the videos, um, with the, at least for the BarCast Daily, some of these 1v1s analysis. I'll try and go a little more technical, perhaps. I'll do my best to appeal to or gear the channel towards those of you who have a lot of experience. And for those of you who are new to Bar, who are new to RTSs, I'll still be producing some of those build order specific videos, some of those maybe like full replay analysis where we talk about a little more of the uh, I guess the nuances of 1v1s and that leads me to my next point so I mean this channel is for y'all I produce these videos for y'all to watch and enjoy and if there's uh, I guess I could use your direction or feedback it's like what what do you all want to see more of I mean leave me in the comments shoot me an email let me know it's like right now we have the barcast dailies of course where we do the 1v1 matches between higher level players we do the build orders or map specific build order videos which um i think are pretty solid they um definitely benefit me for instance i know i've learned quite a bit of the game doing those videos we also have like the roast my replays which i enjoy and for those of you who didn't read any of the comments from mighty sheep in the last video uh, i would go ahead and go check those out because that man definitely spit some knowledge for us on that one so i've been meaning to kind of cover what he actually said in that last video but haven't had haven't found the chance or the idea to do just that but i mean really that's kind of the formats we have so far we've got you know roast my replay we've got full replay analysis we can do we have the of course the barcast dailies where we just do the 1v1 matches and then map specific build order videos so whether it's really bots or vehicles or i've been meaning to make a an air first open on one of those even though that's kind of a meme strat i'm not sure how viable that is but yeah if you all want to Leave me some comments. Give me some feedback. What um, what do you want to see more of? How can I improve the channel? Um, I mean, this is for y'all's enjoyment, and uh, I'm here for for you. I mean, this is uh, I really love Bar. I'd like to see this community grow, and I, I guess like my end game is like, what do I want to see out of this? Would be like a live land 32 man tournament, um, like a multi day tournament. That would just that'd be the, <laughs> the coolest thing ever. So. Let's get there together. Let's get more people involved in the game. Let's get better players, better 1v1 players. And uh, I'll go ahead and get to the match, of course. I'll start talking about this. So, woohoo, look at that. It's such a nice transition. So, yeah, let's get into the replay. I'll unpause the game and we'll start We'll start this one. So, <clears throat> this is uh, Sirtalina, Sir which uh, we just had a cast on this game the other day, and I'm really kind of enjoying this as a 1v1 map. It's uh, somewhere in between like a red comet and a comet catcher, so a little bit bigger than red comet, and I want to say the mech's distribution is a little better for 1v1s, not as awkward. Anyways, without further ado, let's introduce our players. Today, spawning in the top right corner of the map, playing as a blue piece, is, it's Izerad, who is an absolute killer. I don't know how... How much you all know this man? He is not 35 true skill. He's way up there. And his opponent, spawning in the bottom left side of the map, playing as the red pieces, it's Lepaka. Just an absolute killer as well. Um, shout out Lepaka. You handed me an excellent defeat earlier today, so thank you for that. Um, was that this morning? I'm not sure. Anyways, last game we played, he absolutely, uh, absolutely bodied me, so thank you for that. Been meaning to go back and watch that replay and see uh, how greedy you actually played on that map. But, anyways, that's neither here or there. Let's take a look at these opening build orders. Looks like Lapaka went for the um, pretty standard, just like a double max walk, with it, starting with an LOT and a single wind turbine. Goes ahead, caps his third max, 
adds two more wind turbines and is going to go for a bot lab, which is really not indicative of a lot of those like three max opens. And his opponent, Izerad, just going for the um, two max vehicle plant open and has already produced a couple of rovers, which he's, you know, kind of sending across the map. You can take a look at just how good these are at giving some early vision. And I'm not sure if he's actually, kind of, you know, looking for damage or just looking for scouting information, of course. Looks like he's diving in with the one, so that kind of answers that question. That was some weird pathing on that grunt. It kind of walked right through that factory. So he ends up losing both of those. Not a big deal. Um, they're, they're so cheap, really efficient units here. Let can take a look. They're actually 31 mass apiece. So not the biggest waste there. And I would say, honestly, the scouting information is good enough. He kind of confirmed his opponent was going to where the uh, bot lab open. So that can give him some idea about where to be setting these units. You know, how greedy he can play, for instance. Where he should be making blitzes or how quickly to move into tanks. So definitely a good definitely a good use of those rover. And he actually produced another two. So it looks like Izerad... Stepping outside of the main base with his commander, he's got two construction vehicles assisting his factory and has gone into this 13 to 1 construction vehicle on repeat. Uh, two, two rovers as well, so that's an interesting um, interesting unit comp composition coming out of the factory so far. Meanwhile, Lapaka, he's got repeat on. Looks like he's just got grunts all day going for now. He's got this nice little radar positioning. Um, that's excellent. Excellent spot for a radar here on a Sertalina. Yeah, I'm really enjoying this map. I think I might start hosting some more of these 1v1 lobbies because um, I'm not sure how much of y'all enjoy Comet Catcher as a map. It seems like a lot of the high-level high guys um, really like playing games on that map. But um, definitely like to, would like to feature more uh, more maps on the channel. So nothing against Comet Catcher, but that's why I chose this video to cast. So... If you all like these daily casts, go ahead, hit the subscribe button for me. Hit the like button, leave me a comment. Let me know what you'd like to see more of. I know we kind of talked about this earlier in the video, but you know, for all of those of you who have been commenting on the videos, leaving me suggestions and tips, really appreciate that. It helps me improve as a caster, and uh, thank you for taking the time to uh, send me those messages. So I really appreciate it, guys. Thank you. So let's get back into the game. Looks like Izerad. Expanding down this lower right hand side of the map, just adding on LLTs, capping mexes as he goes. Curious to know where he ends up with that commander. I don't really see too many more um, <clears throat> build commands issued. Meanwhile, Lapaka is still sitting in the main base with his commander. Got a little bit of a scuffle here on the right hand side of the map. A couple of grunts taking out these blitzes here. And that was a great unit movement, great catch there. You see another blitz moving on the left hand side of the map. That's going to get caught out by these two grunts here. This LLT finishes just in time to finish that construction bot, and Lapaka kind of deflects this little bit of early game harassment from his opponent. So great job, great control there. You can see actually where he was positioning his grunts relative to this radar. I think he had him about in like these two areas here. So great job, kind of using a using a good unit position in conjunction with your radar coverage to kind of defend yourself from run by. Oop, excuse me. And yeah, just moves back into the middle map of these grunts, kind of splitting them up left and right side, looking for run buys here. I don't think Lapaka quite knows the positioning of these blitzes in the center of the map. It's kind of running right past them. Not a big deal. You can see these grunts. Yeah, they can actually traverse across those entire mountain range there, so that's good to know. I don't, I'm not sure if they can actually hit that little, little area right here, cross across that, but we'll have to keep an eye on, eye out for that in future unit movements. Meanwhile, Lapaka trying to sneak through, thinks better of it, ends up running away with these grunts, and we can take a look at these actual unit statistics here. So these blitzes have 99 speed. Um, what is the acceleration on these, actually? 61 acceleration. Meanwhile, the grunts have 84 speed, and I believe they have just about the same acceleration. So, excuse me, they have 390 acceleration. So if you can actually kind of get next to these grunts with the blitzes of course you can kind of close the gap or get an engagement but really the name of the game with these grunts is to actually outrange and trade we can see they can outrange these blitzes and that's how you trade efficiently against these units i've been really struggling myself in this matchup it's as the bot lab player it can be really tough um, staying on top of these units and getting the most efficient trades that was a nice little choking pattern there and um 
yeah, this is kind of perfect. You got a nice long line there kind of surrounding these blitzes as they move onto your side of the map. You're staying in front of them, kind of preventing them from moving past their units, getting into your back lines, getting to your economy and LLTs. Um, LLTs aren't terribly, terribly effective against these blitzes, so you really got to start trading with them. As far, as far into the map as possible. So see a couple more rover scouts moving out here, trying to get some more information on the battlefield. You can see Lopatka kind of moving his grunts away from these blitzes, finally kind of turns around, catches his mistake. I think these LOTs are in danger. Same for the construction bot. Wondering if Izerad is going to end up uh, trading these units here. So he ends up taking out the LOT. Radar goes down and this construction bot is going to go down. So that's a nice little catch there. I think that's a pretty good trade for these units. I mean, they got the damage they needed, uh, at least catching that construction bot and denying the expansion. And is he going to get out with these units for free? So, Izerad not really pressing his uh, advantage here. He turns around. He wants to trade with these units. Ends up losing all these, um, all those for free. And can see, well, meanwhile, that's going to trigger, that's going to trigger Lepaka to produce his grave robber here. So, I'm sure he's going to be sending that up to the top of the map shortly. He's going to try resing that construction body lost. And meanwhile has moved on to two factory production. So he's got a vehicle plant out once again. His opponent still sitting on one factory production. Just has the two early construction vehicles uh, assisting that factory. He's got a fourth one on the way. And one in the back just continuing to add on these wind turbines. So I'm actually kind of grouping them together. We can see the difference between that. Lepaka has got this nice little array spacing on these units. Gonna be adding on a couple energy converters. Um, he's not too far ahead on uh, energy. He's got a nice balance to it, so I'm not sure what the impetus is behind that. He's got a couple constructs, three construction turrets already added here, so he's got a lot of build power in the main base. Excuse me, I missed a little bit of action there. Looks like Izerad stuck back through with some more blitzes, shaved off a few more LLTs and metal extractors, and is gonna get some more damage done. So. You can see energy converters going down, wind turbines. And Lepaka is a little bit out of position here. So this is a nice little raid in the main base. How much more damage is he going to get with these blitzes here? You can see one construction turret just almost ends up going down. Oh my goodness, these, <laughs> these blitzes are getting so much damage done. Uh, meanwhile, in the middle of the map, you can see Lepaka has added on so many LLTs here in the center. What is that, 11 LOTs just sitting here in the middle of the map? So definitely has a better map position, so to speak. Um, is this Grave Robber going to get caught out? Goes down. Wow, nice catch there. So um, this Rover paying for itself. If those Grave Robbers are not cheap, I think they're about 100 and some odd mass. 110 mass apiece. So that was a great catch, kind of denying that Grave Robber from moving up to this top side of the board, you know, resing this resing this construction bot and all this free reclaim here that's that's not a trivial amount of reclaim here in the center you can take a look the second grave robber has got some res commands issued yeah that's about a thousand mass sitting there in the uh, top left hand corner of the map meanwhile azurad not laying off this harassment here tries to sneak through a, a, another blitz here gets ends up getting caught out by these uh, incisors of his opponent and this game's kind of slowed down a little bit so let's take a look where these players are at Look at the metal produced so far. Almost dead even. So just like a 200 mass, 150 mass deficit between these two players. So that's really too close to give an advantage. Um, Azurad scooping up this mass in the top left. Or excuse me, Lopaka is scooping up this mass in the top left hand corner. Azurad's pushing across the map again. I really like these rovers kind of mixed in with this unit composition. You can kind of get an idea for where where your opponent's units are at where can you strike where can you get extra damage done and is this grave robber going to go down and see we can take a look at back that meanwhile there's a little bit of engagement here we have the blitzes versus incisors and a couple grunts in the mix and i'd say that was a little bit of a blunder there by Izerad. he ends up losing a lot of those units not the most efficient trade in the world but pulls back with a lot of his units he's going to regroup for now and looks like Izerad's produced a bot lab here in the bottom middle port of the map and has produced several maces here. So that's going to help clear out these uh, LLT installations of his opponent. Lepaka has gone ahead and made another forward factory. He ended up reclaiming that bot lab in his main base. And 
He's got another uh, ins uh, another blitz here, kind of snuck into the back line here. Is taking out a lot of wind turbines. Looks like that construction turret got off a pretty cheeky reclaim there. So, for those of you who don't know, yeah, you can definitely reclaim units and kill them. So, keep an eye out for those kind of uh, opportunities. And looks like we got a little bit of an engagement here. So, Lapaka stepping forward with these units. He wants to shoo away these maces and. Yeah, it's going to force an engagement. I'm not sure how well this is going to work out for him. Izerad kiting back with these maces. He's shaving off a lot of units here. They're pretty tanky. These things can, uh, can stay in a fight for a long time. So it looks like Lepaka is kind of pulling back to the... Uh, pulling back to his defenses. He needs to get more units... More units together before he engages, but... Looks like he's produced some thugs of his own and is kind of threatening this main base, but there's a lot of blitzes and medium tanks, so it's a nice little tech one army here. 11 blitzes, 4 stouts, 4 rovers can easily deal with these thugs here, but Lepaka's going to be moving forward with his uh, vehicles as well, so we can take a look at this engagement here. Looks like these thugs are kiting back, blitzes flanking on the left side. I'm wondering if they're going to be getting some of that uh, flanking, flanking bonus damage here. A lot of damage output here. These stouts can really, um, really hold the line here. They're definitely hard to clean up at this point in the mid game here. Looks like uh, Lapaka got the better end of that trade there. Almost all these units end up going down. We have four tanks left over for Izerad here, and these are some really heavily damaged units though. So I'm not sure how much longer they're going to be in this battle for now. It's like finally getting kind of cleaned up here. So close to your opponent's production, it can be hard to. Uh, Kind of continue a fight. I'd like to see another Grave Robber out from Izerad. He's got a lot of mass sitting right in front of his main base. Meanwhile, these thugs, or excuse me, maces, of our blue, pair, blue player kind of continuing to put pressure on the central part of the map. Really good job, Lapaka, kind of holding this down. You can launch attacks from either, really either position here. You can kind of move around. Great position on the map to hold for yourself. And it looks like, yeah, these maces versus thugs. Medium bots versus medium bots. Izerad stepping forward, getting off a couple D-guns there. So that was a great trade. Shaved off half, about half of that army there. So really good job using that commander's um, pretty insane DPS. Even though they're paper thin, really, at this point in the game. Super vulnerable units. These thugs actually outrange commanders. Not sure if they have the same movement speed, so... What is that? 45 movement speed to the commanders. 38. Yeah, so thugs are faster than commanders and outrange them, so you really don't want to get caught out in the open field against these units. Looks like Izerad has produced a grave robber. He's going to be scooting it in the back lines here and looking to um, kind of gain control of this reclaim field. Looks like he's got a res command issued for all these units here, and meanwhile, Izerad pressing forward with a lot of medium tanks. He's pushing his opponent off of that uh, off of that production point while well, Apaka kind of stepped away from it chasing down this T1 army so this game's getting a little scrappy for now both commanders are kind of caught out in the open a little vulnerable lapaka has got a lot of LOTs to kind of stand next to and defend himself but I want to say Lepaka is kind of throwing these armies away I mean he's getting he's getting some economy he's shaving off some LOTs but this is leaving a lot of wrecks for his opponent a lot of wrecks here on his side of the map to kind of trade and contest over. I guess the saving grace is he's continuing to expand on this left side. But Izerad's got a large standing army here. We can see he's got 14 medium tanks, one mace to his opponent, which just has about uh, 12 of these light tanks. So Lapaka still has yet to move into this medium tank production. Finally see some brutes making their way onto the battlefield. And Izerad continuing to make use of these rovers here. So picking off... Um, Picking off these metal extractors where he can. Looks like Izerad's kind of circling around. Trying to finally clean up the rest of these units here. Got some more light tanks stepping forward. Shaving off LOTs. He's going to get another D-gun off. Oh my gosh. Takes out about nine units there for free. Just kind of steps forward with that commander. And that was a great trade. So I want to say I'd give the advantage to Izerad. We can look at these statistics right now. He's sitting at about 3k metal advantage. You can take a look at these player views, just see how much of the map control he actually has. So units on the top side, units on the bottom. 
moving forward, his opponent Lapaka is kind of kind of surrounded here in the middle of the map. That is a lot of medium tanks here. I think uh, Lapaka's commander is a little at risk here. I mean, you can go for the commander sniper. You can just continue on to the main base. We can see here. Izerad chosen the latter of the options. He's moving forward. Taking out build power, taking out LLTs here, and this commander, I mean, you can go for the sniper, you can just cripple your opponent's production. I think that's what he's chosen to do here. Completely decimating this main base. I think we might see uh, Lapaka tapping out here shortly enough. Yeah, so he calls GG. Control cases commander, and that's going to be the game. So, really well played, Izerad, both players. Nice match between the two of you. Uh, I'm going to be trying to focus on bringing... Some more maps to y'all, so if you like these daily casts, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.